Have you been to the doctor's office and they asked you breast a bottle and you really didn't know which one you wanted to do? Uh, really, I mean, you really didn't have enough information about breastfeeding. You really couldn't make that decision. And you knew about formula, but you wanted to really consider something better for your baby. Well, this video is just for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya and I am here to teach you everything you need to know in order to have a healthy, happy baby. Today, I want to talk to you about breastfeeding. This is what I want you to know about breastfeeding so that you can make the right decision for you and your baby. So let's get to it. First of all, I want you to know this is your decision. We know what the sign says, and that is breastfeeding is the best milk for all babies, including preemies, preterm babies, and newborns. So I'm not going to tell you what you should do. I trust that you can make the best decision for your baby once you have all the information that you need and once you get all your questions answered. So in this video, I will give you information to educate you about breastfeeding and I will feature moms who have breastfed. Who better to get the information from than moms who have experienced breastfeeding? Now, I want you to put any questions or comments that you may have in the comment section. I read every one of them and I will answer every one of them. Then I want you to make the best decision between breastfeeding or bottle feeding or both breastfeeding and bottle feeding. Whatever you do, just know that once you make your decision, you can always change your decision. You can change your mind about it at any time. First, we're going to hear from some professionals. Let's see what they have to say about breastfeeding. African-American women breastfeed at lower rates than any other group in the U.S., including Asian, Hispanic, and white women. So basically what you're seeing behind me is not the norm. The reason this matters is that it puts our children at higher risk for asthma, obesity, diabetes, and other chronic diseases. The very same health conditions that disproportionately affect the black community. Um, so there's some stigma around breastfeeding that um, stems back um, from traditions that may hinder or some moms may not even want to just because, you know, traditions in their family, what they've been taught, not having um, the support that they need to understand that breastfeeding is really the best thing and, and to really encourage them to do so um, with, with their baby. Um, black moms are more likely to have smaller um, early babies. And so that often leads to separation. And when you're separated from your baby, that makes establishing breastfeeding a little bit more challenging. Um, but what we always tell moms in the NICU, um, you should mimic what the baby does. And when you are starting breastfeeding, you need to put the baby to breast within the first hour. Baby should breastfeed every eight to 12, um, eight to 12 times in 24 hours. Um, which um, is one of the stigmas and misconceptions that people have all the time. They think that formula is better because then the baby is going to sleep more, which they don't sleep. They're not supposed to sleep that long. Um, some other physical challenges, some babies come out with lip ties and tongue ties, and that can be challenging to establish breastfeeding. Um, sometimes breastfeeding hurts, and it, and it, and it does, I'm going to be honest. Um, but... Um, those are things that you can get through. Um, and especially if you have the support, um, there are lactation counselors, peer counselors. Um, um, so those can be some of those physical challenges that present themselves early on. But in the long term, getting past those things, breastfeeding is so much more rewarding um, and can last long term. I mean, I'm a mom that breastfed and I did it for 18 months and I did it with a late preterm. My son was born at 36 weeks. He had a lip tie, he had a tongue tie. I took him home at five pounds and we made it to 18 months. So it's possible. All right, that was some good information. Now let's hear from some moms. Let's see what they have to say about breastfeeding. What have their experience been? I've had three children consecutively. Um, they're three years old, 20 months, and three weeks old. And I breastfed all of them full time, no formula. Um, I did give them breast milk in a bottle when I had to, only when I would want to go out that night or if I had something to do the next day and they had to be in the sitter's care. I'd give them breast milk up until they had, you know, up until they, were, they didn't need breast milk anymore. I breastfed them, my first two, for 
to 12 months to 14 months. And um, Amir 12 months, Elijah, Isaiah 14 months, and Elijah, I plan on nursing him for 18 months. And I actually anticipated on nursing all three of my children to 18 months, but I didn't because I ended up getting pregnant after they turned one. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> when Amir turned one, I got pregnant. When Elijah turned, when Isaiah turned one, I got pregnant. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm getting my IUD in the next couple of weeks. The next three weeks, I'm getting the IUD. So. This is my first baby. This is Mia. She is three months old right now, and I actually just fed her her afternoon snack. Um, by now, at three months, she eats six times a day for about 10 minutes on each side, sometimes up to 12 minutes on each side. And her routine is very predictable at this point. But for the months leading up until this point, um, definitely month zero, not months, weeks zero through six, uh, the schedule is a little bit different. This is my youngest and he's two months old. My oldest is going to be 14 at the end of the month. I breastfed all of my children from the moment they were born um, up until at least a year. And um, the longest I've breastfed is to about two, two and a half years old. My words of wisdom for other moms, especially mothers of color, would be to just do whatever you want to do and do what's best for you and your baby. Um, there's studies and reports that show that breastfeeding past six months, you know, have huge benefits for baby, even longer than that if you breastfeed to a year. So do it. I don't want to be told you know, how long I should breastfeed, how I should breastfeed, or when I should breastfeed. It's, it, this is my body and my kid and my life. I'm a grown woman. I have three. The youngest is almost a year next week. The middle is six, and the oldest is 17 going on 18. I'm a stepmommy. My first boy, Joshua was breastfed, but only at night because when I went to work at three months, my milk supply decreased. And then when he went to daycare, I just gave up. It was easier to go to the grocery store and buy formula. The more that I supply formula, the lower my milk supply went. And so with this time for childcare, the temptation is to go to Target and buy formula. But for him, I'm like, no, I want to do this. Family support this time, they're more supportive than with Joshua. What was most effective was engaging them in the breastfeeding process. Said, okay, let's go get consultation. And you can hear, this is what I learned from this class. And this one, so far, one year. Again, the sexualization of breasts and breastfeeding, um, hiding as if it's something to be afraid of or to be embarrassed by. The breasts are for feeding your baby. That's what they're for. Um, so if we continue to um, allow, you know, our moms not to be educated on the reasons for the breast and supporting them and encourage them to do so, then the change won't happen. And we have to start with the education. There was this big, like, press for using formula. And then it, people started to realize that the, that human milk was better. Um, but at that time in the 70s and 80s, when that realization happened, it was a time where Black women were not getting traditional um, care for um, pr during their pregnancies. And so they didn't get that education. So they were still being taught to use formula. And so when you don't see your neighbor or your sister or your mother or your aunt, um, breastfeeding or you're going you're not and you're going to the doctor's office and you're not being taught to breastfeed then that's not something that they learn to do um, so now as more black women are educated and more black women um, are going to traditional um, health care services during their pregnancies they are we're, they're starting to learn and we're starting to learn and it's a matter of changing that narrative now and teaching our moms and our aunts <laughs> um, that no, we're not going to feed our baby's formula, we're going to breastfeed. Take classes if they can, um, learn about where they can get help for free, because a lot of times the hospitals or people where they're giving birth, they have free help that they can get and different things that they can go to, um, and just make sure they get as much information as possible before their baby gets here, so they can be informed and kind of know what to look out for and it's just easier once you have some sort of background um, on breastfeeding before just trying to do it and not knowing anything. Don't give up. 
even if um, I made a post, I made a post during breastfeeding month last year on social media and a number of women had shared with me their stories as a result of my post because with my first son, my milk didn't come up the right way, the way I wanted it to rather. And then with my second son, it was kind of just like an overflow of milk. And I shared that and so many moms said, oh, with my first one, I had the same experience and I just thought I would never be able to breastfeed again. If that's you, if you had that experience with the first one, don't give up. I promise every baby is different. Your body may react differently with the second baby. Even if you are at the beginning stages of your journey and you're feeling discouraged or you're feeling like maybe it's not enough, just find that comfort zone. For me, breastfeeding is all about, it's kind of like a, a dance with the baby, right? Finding that special spot, getting them comfortable in there, getting yourself comfortable and allowing your body to do what it's supposed to do naturally. Now, I hope that has given you the information that you need to make the right decision for you and your baby. So breastfeeding comes with a lot of healthy benefits for you and your baby. And you can lose weight faster with breastfeeding instead of formula because it requires a lot of calories to breastfeed. So you, you can eat extra calories and not gain any additional weight and you can lose weight when you breastfeed. Okay, okay. So I, I didn't mention that the biggest benefit of breastfeeding and that is breastfeeding is free and formula is costly if you had to pay for it out of your pocket. Now, if you have WIC or some other assistance, then of course, formula is not going to be costly to you. But however, it's in the long run, your baby won't have the advantage of the breast milk, all the antibodies, all the nutritional value. The CDC recommends six months of breastfeeding for the very best results, but at least one day of colostrum would help protect your baby. However, I want to encourage you to breastfeed for at least the time that you're in the hospital with the support of the lactation nurse and the other staff nurses. But remember, the choice is yours. Here's to your happy and healthy baby. If this video was helpful, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.